I'm Barb Demarest, and I'm the founder of KnittedKnockers.org. What inspired you to create the organization? Well, it was 12 years ago when I heard the words that no woman wants to hear that I had breast cancer. And I immediately thought, I hope I don't lose my hair and I hope I don't have to have a mastectomy. Well, I did have to have a mastectomy, but I thought it'll be okay. Nobody needs to know because I can be immediately reconstructed. But due to complications, that didn't happen. So when I was exploring what I could um, wear to get back to work and stuff, I made a, a call to a local support group. And I'll never forget the voice on the other end of the line saying to me, oh, honey, you can't put anything on that scar for at least six weeks. And I was just devastated. Six weeks, I needed to get back to work. I wanted to get back to life. I wanted to be normal. And that six weeks was devastating. In fact, that was the first time I had cried through the whole um, thing. And it was later when I went to my doctor's office that I picked up a brochure for the traditional breast prosthetics that you can order. And my doctor saw me holding that. And he said, many women are not satisfied with the, that as a solution. They can be hot and heavy and sticky. And I said, well, what am I going to do? And he said, that man doctor said to me, do you knit? Uh, yeah, why? Because I've never seen one, but I've heard there's such a thing as a knitted knocker. You might want to check it out. Well, I rushed out of my doctor's office and I called my dear friend Phyllis, who's an excellent knitter because I wasn't in any shape at that point to make my own. And I said, have you heard of a knitted knocker? And she said, no, but I'll find out. So it was... Uh, about a week later, when I ventured out into public for the first time and I went to church, I was really self-conscious. I put on a loose fitting jacket. I didn't want anybody to look at me. And I went to church. But here comes Phyllis tripping into church with a Victoria's Secret bag. <laughs> and she gave it to my husband and says, give it to Barb. And don't look in the bag. Well, I knew what had to be in that bag. So I took it into the bathroom. And in that bathroom stall, I took out the most beautiful knitted knocker. It was soft. It was light. It was huggable. I could wear it in a regular bra, not a medical device bra. And best of all, it was made by somebody who cared. I took off that loose fitting jacket after putting this in my bra and I re-engaged with life. I know it sounds dramatic, but it changed everything for me. And so I went out, I hugged my friends and it was like, Barb is back. And I thought right then we need to provide these beautiful knitted knockers to our doctor's offices. So when women are in there like myself, wondering what they're going to do, they're available to them. So that was the beginning of Knitted Knockers Support Foundation, also known as knittedknockers.org. And I can expound, but I'm just going to come up for air and see if you have any questions yet. Yeah. What does it mean to you when you see people, you know, use the knitted knockers? Well, we hear over and over from recipients the same story um, as what I experienced. In fact, to illustrate that, we started, I went to my doctor and I said, if we make these, will you start distributing? Will you hand them out? And he said, we'd love to do that. We'd love to give them away free. And it wasn't long after that when I got a call from my nurse, the, my doctor's nurse. And she said, Barb, I wish you could be here when we give out these knitted knockers. She said, women come in that are despondent, wondering what they're going to do. And we bring out these knitted knockers. And she said, 
they laugh, they cry. They're just, I just wish you could be here. And I told Julie, I said, I don't need to be there because I'm that person. So that's what it means um, to be able to provide these two uh, women going through this uh, difficult time. And as we were uh, knitting these, Phyllis and I started making them. And by the way, we have crochet, if any of you are uh, wondering about that. But uh, we knew we couldn't keep up. We just knew it because our doctor said there's a, back then, 12 years ago, there were 50,000 mastectomies done a year in the United States. Now there's 100,000 done a year. And 50% of those women uh, are choosing or for various reasons not being reconstructed. And many of those that are eventually reconstructed will wear a prosthetic at least for a while while they're going through treatment. So there's this huge potential demand for it. And like my doctor said, Barb, these are great, but if you're going to expand beyond us, you better pre be prepared um, because so many women are just not happy with the traditional breast prosthetic. So uh, I realized early on that we needed to reach out and inspire and equip local groups to support their own doctors in their own community. And that way, together, we can meet this need out there. And so uh, knittedknockers.org, we created this website where uh, we posted our the patterns free of charge. We put on video tutorials on how to knit and crochet them. And we also um, uh, created print materials that they could print off and take to their doctors and to help support them uh, in giving out the knitted knockers and making them. Uh, we also created a, a, a portal for women to order free knitted knockers. Back then, I can remember celebrating when we reached 1,000 knitted knockers given out. Now, fast forward to today, system-wide in the United States, we're giving away um, over, well over 10,000 knitted knockers every wow. month. month. Every month? All made by volunteers completely made by volunteers. So as we got involved in this, and yes, there was a big demand for these knitted knockers as word started getting out. Thankfully, knitters and crocheters just raised up and embraced this project because we all know somebody who has had breast cancer or is dealing with it, and we all wanna help, but how can we? And knitters and crocheters seem to be an exceptionally giving and caring group. So we needed to inspire and equip them. And we did that by uh, posting those patterns, which have now been downloaded about 1.2 million times. And these video tutorials that have been viewed, I think about three quarters of a million times. And uh, we, we worked out different ways that they can help. They can just knit or crochet them and mailing mail them to us unstuffed and we'll stuff them and process them and use them to fill orders that come in from the website. We also were very excited to partner with medical facilities. And we were excited to find out how much they loved having this um, to give to their patients, this comfort and dignity, this little gift um, means a lot to them to be able to give out to their patients because they want to help them too. And so we currently are supporting over 2,100 medical clinics. And I just want to emphasize all of this is done free of charge. We're an all volunteer organization, no paid employees, and it is just love and caring um, that is driving this organization. One of the things I was asked early on was, if you need so many of these knitted knockers and they're such a great product, why can't you just manufacture them and sell them cheap? And I thought, we could do that, but this is so much more than a great product. Yeah, I'm reminded of the story of Anne 
we had this local group of about 20 volunteers that would come together every week to stuff knockers and prepare them for sending out. And we would laugh and just have a great time. And Anne came one time and Anne, I would guess, would be about 80 years old. And she sat down and quietly crocheted while she was there on a knocker. And it came time to leave. And I followed her out to her car. And I said, Anne, it was just so great having you here with us today. I really uh, am thankful that you came. And she looked at me and she said, you know, I lost my husband about three years ago. And she said, I've been grieving terrible ever since. I've tried grief therapy. I've tried counseling. I've tried group things. Nothing has helped like this has, knowing that I can still make a difference in someone else's life. So are we going to manufacture this? No. But it's even more. We hear over and over from women that receive these, how shocked and amazed and meaningful it is to them that a complete stranger would care enough to make this for them. And they can feel the love knit into every stitch. So are we going to charge for them? No. Are we going to manufacture them? No. These are always given out. We started counting in 2015 how many we've given out. And we've passed 600,000 of them giving out, giving out free. And so, uh, like I said, these are more than just a great product. Though they are great, you can swim in them. They come in different sizes and colors, A, B, C, D, double D. You can get beiges, off-whites, dark brown, black, um, bright colors. We want to make this for you. So, yeah. How has the project helped your own healing process? Well, I wasn't exaggerating when that gift of comfort and dignity by a caring friend changed everything for me. All of a sudden, I started looking out towards others instead of poor me. My whole attitude changed when I started focusing on, oh, how can we help others instead of just fretting about me? So I can say that that, that has had a significant impact. I did retire after that because I spent so much time on knitted knockers, there was no time for work anymore. In fact, I only half jokingly say that I work harder now than I ever did for a paycheck, but the rewards are priceless for sure. And I know the organization's based in uh, Washington State, but I found out about it when I went to the Virginia State Fair and there was a, a group uh, creating them and talking about them in Virginia. Did you ever think it was going to grow nationwide? Oh, my goodness. I I had my hopes, but my vision was way smaller than what it's become. My hope was that we could support 500 clinics around the country, 10 in each state. We're doing four times that much now. Um, we have a group, a group's Let's see, over 5,000 uh, registered individuals and groups with us that are registered knitters and crocheters. And they are making them like crazy, which obviously we couldn't give out 10,000 a month without them. And we, uh, we have out of that, that network of groups, we have 187 what we call state suppliers. And those are people that have agreed, agreed people or groups, um, to fill orders that come into knittedknockers.org, to fill orders that have come in from women from their state. And the beauty of that is that they are knitting and crocheting for people of their own community and the recipients are getting these knitted knockers from people that care that are from their state. We reimburse for the postage um, because we are a 501c3 nonprofit and we want to support all these people every way that we can. We also have, I don't even know how many, but over a hundred uh, groups that are um, have adopted medical facilities. Of those 2,100 registered medical clinics with us around the United States, 
about 1,200 of them are supported locally. So they're knitting and crocheting and taking them into this clinic who says, I want these. I want to be able to give them to our patients. And we're providing the print brochures and the care instructions and such. So once again, the recipients are getting it from people in their own communities. We're inspiring and equipping them to do that. So did I envision that it would be this big? No. And in fact, I think if I had been told this, I would have been too scared to start. But, you know, you just put one foot in front of another and then, yeah. Who knew? <laughs> what would you say to anyone who is currently going through what you went through? that there is a lot of caring, loving people out there and there are a tremendous amount of resources. But I do know from personal experience, connecting with those is not always the easiest thing. One of the things that I was shocked to find out is women, when they would order their free knitted knockers from us, many of them would tell us their stories, their struggles with lymphedema or scarred radiated skin, um, these uh, the multiple surgeries or this. And I was like, whoa, they're telling us these intimate things. And on pondering it, I realized that this is a personal thing that we don't always share with our friends and family. But um, this became a vehicle where they knew that we understood and that they could share their stories with us. So it became very healing. So I do think it's uh, it's good to connect with people that can understand and relate and to know that it's okay to not be able to be reconstructed. There are things that can help you if you choose uh, to have garments to wear. For me, it was all about trying to be normal. And so the fact that I could wear a regular bra, I didn't need to buy a prosthetic bra, was so cool to me. Just to be able to have that sense of normalcy, I could just wear my stuff. I didn't have to go to you know, anything different that way. Some people, it's like still being able to exercise and 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 look normal, go swimming and such. So um, I'm not sure that really answered your question, but uh, it's not easy. Oh, my goodness. It's not an easy process. And God bless every one of us going through it. But uh, we are a sisterhood and there's a lot of people out there um, that love and care. Where do you want to see the organization in the next three to five years? Oh, gosh. I am so excited that the medical uh, facilities have caught the vision. We used to have to go out and, and encourage them to offer these. They are coming to us now. We get uh, a new medical facility registered for the first time with us every single day. We average, well, I don't want to exaggerate, five a week are coming to us saying, how can we offer these to our patients? We want to do it. Uh, and so um, to me, that's personally exciting. Um, I, you know, finances are always a challenge since we are a nonprofit and we have no big donors and we're not in uh obligation to anybody, yarn companies or anything like that. So we uh, we are always looking for opportunities to raise funds. Um, being all volunteer run uh, has its challenges and we just love the people that have caught the vision and have the skills and whatever and are willing to donate their time for that. That's not answering your question really, five years. I don't know that I've got a five-year plan. Like I said, from the very beginning, if if somebody had told me in 12 years, this is where you're going to be, I go, what are you smoking? <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I make no bones about it. I, I really do believe that this is a God thing and that the doors that have opened, um, not only in the United States, but internationally is just beyond what we could have done in the natural we are in 67 countries now. There are groups in 67 countries. So it's not only the United States, it's worldwide. 
So how can people reach out and support? Well, thank you for that question. I always say there's three ways you can help because hopefully you're going, oh my gosh, I want to help, but I'm not a knitter or crocheter, or I want to help, but I don't have any money, or I want to help, but. Um, so there's three ways that that uh, you can help. One is if, you, if you're on social media at all, share about Knitted Knockers. We, we have a Facebook page. We have an Instagram page. We even have a TikTok page page. Oh my gosh, that's so beyond me. But we have a young <laughs> volunteer that does it for us, bless her heart. And um, share about Knitted Knockers because uh, you reach a couple of different target groups when you do that. You reach women that can use them that you may not even know could use them. And they may not know about Knitted Knockers. Um, you reach potential knitters and crocheters. That's one way to help. A second way is if you are a knitter or crocheter, go to knittedknockers.org, download the patterns. If you're really brave, and I'm just being silly about that, register with us and you get one whole email that'll tell you uh, about how to help. And there's approved yarns list there. There's, uh, you know, we're going to equip you to make great knitted knockers. It's so important that you use approved yarns that not are just feel soft to the touch, but that are going to hold up against um, everyday intimate wear and repeated washings and such. Anyway, we're going to equip you to do that. The third way is to donate. Oh my goodness. If we figure it costs us about $10 to provide a pair of knitted knockers to a woman. And so a lot of our donations are $10. We don't get the big, huge ones yet. Maybe you're the one, but <laughs> um, but we are pedaling as hard as we can and as fast as we can. And uh, by God's grace, we're making it. And it's by the generosity of people giving uh, what they can to help uh, us as we're in this journey together. And that can be done at knittedknockers.org or the snail mail checks come in. We actually do things like that too. Um, but um, but we are in the 21st century where we um, uh, will actually do it online too at knittedknockers.org. 